Welcome to Physics Notes. This first session is going to be uh, a recap of what our vocabulary is. Uh, most of you have been exposed to many of these terms before, and I just want to make sure we're both on the same page. So whether it was in another physics class that you took last year or in your previous physical science classes, it's very important that we all use the correct vocabulary um, because that's really the root of where misconceptions start. So to start off, inertia. Inertia, quite simply, is resistance to changes in motion. Now, this is a T there. This is a property of matter. So everything with mass has inertia, and you can even think of mass as the measure of inertia. So that being said, the units, if you want to give inertia units, would be kilograms. That would be the SI unit of inertia. Now, velocity is uh, very often misused and not understood. Velocity in simplest terms is an object's motion. So when you describe an object's motion, if you think about it, you need more than one descriptor in order to accurately describe it. So if I was talking about a heavy object moving around the room and you were all trapped in that room, I might tell you that it's going at 10 meters per second. That's important information, but you might also want to know where it's going to be so that you can make sure that you're not in the way. So to properly describe velocity, you need two values. Those are the magnitude and direction. Now, anything described by both magnitude and direction, or in fact, mathematically, anything that requires two numbers to describe it is considered a vector. And we describe vectors by drawing arrows where the length of the arrow is the magnitude and the direction that it's pointing is the direction. Now, acceleration is in your car, when you use the word acceleration, it usually means speeding up. And then we usually use the term decelerate to slow down. In physics, we're, we have a much more specific definition and acceleration is described as any change in motion. So since an object's motion is its velocity, acceleration can also be thought of as a change in velocity. So the formula, if you will, for acceleration is going to be equal to the change in velocity. And what also matters is how much time goes by during that change. So the units of acceleration would be the units of velocity divided by the units of time. And if you simplify that, you wind up with meters per second squared. Meters per second times one over S is meters per second squared. Now, this is also a vector, so it has both magnitude and direction. So you can think about changing velocity in several different ways. You could change the magnitude of velocity, that would be a change, or you could also change the direction of the velocity, that would also be a change. Any change in velocity is an acceleration. Now, force, which is really our primary focus for this first project that we're doing, um, is if you look it up in your textbook, you'll find a definition where they call it a push or a pull. I think a much better definition is an interaction between two objects. And the reason why I like this definition better is because a pusher and pull doesn't really describe what's going on very accurately. An interaction has several key descriptors if you think about it. So if you have an interaction, you can't interact with just yourself. You need another object. And there are some misconceptions about forces that if you, if you understand this definition um, are a little easier to avoid. So a force is an interaction between two objects. It's also a vector. So it has magnitude and direction. And forces can cause accelerations. So right there you have four key vocabulary words that from now on I'm going to kind of expect you to use in the proper way. A lot of times when people talk about inertia, they use the word momentum, which is not really correct. We'll talk about momentum. You'll learn lots about it. It's a very fundamental property that you can use to explain a lot of things, but oftentimes it's used to explain things for the wrong reason. So think about what inertia is. It's resistance to changes in motion. Velocity is the motion. Acceleration is the change in that motion. And then force is what can cause those accelerations. So these four things are integrally related, um, and they are your four fundamental vocabulary words for your introduction to physics. Now, in the next video, we'll talk about Newton's laws and some very common misconceptions. Thanks.